CTU, uh, um, el seminario en el sur de, de Chicago, en el Park. Okay. Gracias a ustedes. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, Okay, everyone in the back, can you hear me? Perfect. I want to ask you for a favor. I want you to stand up for just one second. Stand up for one second. Beautiful. Thank you. That tells me that you can hear me. Now you can go back to your seats. <laughs> I would like to invite uh, Brother Baldry to come up here and start us up with a prayer because I think it's important to ask God to allow us to come together in one spirit. Vamos a invitar al hermano Bobby para que nos ayude a orar, a hacer una oración inicial. Okay, if you can uh, all stand up again one more time, just to open in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this day. We thank you for the light that you give us. We thank you for the wonderful creation in which you have called us to be. And we ask you right now, as we are about to enter this time of sharing, this time of reflection, this time of prayer around your, your beautiful saints and how to heal, you are blessed with so much gifts. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts. We send your Holy Spirit upon us. We send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts so that we may be able to receive the graces that you want to share with us through our speaker, Brother Jose. We ask you to send your Spirit to God, Brother Jose. We touch his word, I feel like so that his word may, may touch our hearts and that we may grow to love with you through the life of your wonderful saint, St. Patrick Hill. We ask all this through prayer that you ourselves have taught us as we say, Our Father, our God, our Lord, For St. Francis, 
after this metanoia, this life-changing experience that he has, leads them into living and observe a drastic discipleship life, a radical discipleship life. After his conversion, St. Francis understands that in order to live this call of radical Christian discipleship, he has to imitate Christ as much as possible and in all, in all ways possible. How many people don't know this, but St. Francis of Assisi was never, he, he wasn't ordained, he wasn't a priest. He was a lay brother who became a deacon in order that he could preach. But it's not until St. Francis encounters a leper in his hometown, Assisi, that he understands fully his call. The call that God was calling him to. St. Francis says, here I quote, When I was in my sins, it seemed a thing too bitter to look on lepers. And the Lord himself led me among them, and I showed them mercy and compassion. And when I left them, what has seemed bitter to me was changed into sweetness of mind and body. End of quote. In his contemplation of Christ, St. Francis says, Look guys, Christ loves us so much that he humbled himself for us. Now if you don't believe me, take a look at him. He has become like one of us. In the Incarnation, the Eternal Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But if that doesn't convince you, then you need to look at what He does next. He goes on to the cross and embraces the suffering of the cross because He loves us. And by this virtue, by this gift, we are justified. And we are sanctified. But wait, there is more. His love for us doesn't stop there. He becomes physically present in the forms of bread and wine that become the body and the blood of Christ Himself. What Francesco understands is that Christ lowers Himself in these three mysteries. The crucifixion, the incarnation, the crucifixion, and the Eucharist in order to redeem us and to bring us back to the Father. St. Paul refers to this as the kenosis in his letter to the Philippians. Now St. Francis wouldn't know this word because this is a Greek word, kenosis, but he understands it as poverty, and humility. And therefore, that's what he does for the rest of his life. He becomes an outcast in the city of Assisi in this medieval age to follow and imitate Christ who humbled himself, who is rich and becomes poor like one of us in our humanity. And so that's what St. Francis imitates. There is, however, another aspect that Francesco, St. Francis, contemplates about the life of our Savior. And that is the suffering of Christ in the cross. And St. Francis contemplates this mystery so much that in the summer, of the year 1224, Francis goes up to a mountain, the mountain of Laverna, very close to Assisi, his hometown, to celebrate the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother, which is what day? 
August the 15th. This I got it. You guys get a relic at the end of the talk. But when he goes there, he has the vision of fasting and praying for 40 days. And so prepare himself for the feast of Saint Michael, the Archangel. But on the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross, which is September the 14th, Saint Francis receives in his hands his feet and his side the sacred wounds of our Lord. Now Francesco was 42 years old when he receives the stigmatas. And two years later, after receiving the stigmata, he dies. So he only had the wounds of our Lord for two years. In the 2000 years of Catholic Church history, there has been a total, of number, a total number of 340 people who have had that stigmata. And out of those 340 people, only eight had been canonized. Now most of the stigmatists of people who have had the wounds of our Lord are women. Saint Francis of Assisi was the first one in church history to have them. But after him follows a list of religious women. Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Rita of Cassia, Saint Faustina, Saint Veronica Giuliani, who was a Capuchin nun, and the list goes on and on and on until the year 1918. A Capuchin priest receives the stigmata. He is officially the first and only priest to have received the sacred wounds of our Lord. Can you guess who this is? Say it louder. Padre Pio. Very good. One more time. Padre Pio. Perfect. You got it. Now there is something to say about the stigmata or the wounds of Christ our Lord. Because rather than seeing the stigmata as, as a proof of holiness, the church expects to see holiness as a proof of the stigmata. In other words, you don't become automatically holy simply because you're burying the wounds of Christ. But if you, if you bear the wounds of Christ, you have to prove your holiness. And then that becomes, or well, that grants you the grace to be among the saints. Because holiness does not consist in a special gifts from God, which are given solely for the good of the faithful and for the body of Christ. The stigma to lie in the exercise of virtues to a heroic degree and with perseverance until the very end. This is why one can only be verified after or only after death because as long as we are alive, we are all in danger of falling in sin. Doesn't matter how much you think you're close to God. The stigmata of the sacred wounds are very strange and rare phenomena. They are a unique mystical sign that only a few people have experienced. When someone receives the stigmata, they share the suffering of Christ in a very, very literal way. Because they physically have the pains of our Lord in His passion, spiritually, physically. Stigmatists often experience wounds in their hands, their feet, and their side, the wounds of the crucifixion. Some experience wounds or pain and wounds on their heads, the wounds of the crown. 
crown of thorns. Saul experienced this pain and these wounds in their backs, which are the wounds of the scourging of our Lord Jesus. And of course, Saul experienced a mix, a combination of them all. Stigmatists are often not believed because they reveal their mystical wounds and many of them, they try to hide them all together so as not to draw any attention to themselves. But the stigmata provides a significant spiritual gift for both the bearers and the witnesses. When a person bears the stigmata, he or she grows in a deep spiritual union with Christ and is permitted to share the physical spirit suffering of our Lord. Now there are five criteria for the stigmata to be considered a genuine wound, a genuine wound of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, the stigmata has to be real. One, I experience change or changes in skin or the tissues or the place where the wounds of a Christ are present. Two, they must appear instantaneously and in general they bring the sharpest pain on days that recall the passion of the Lord such as Fridays and during Holy Week. Number three, in true stigmata, there is no infection on the wounds, nor do they have a bad smell. Rather, oftentimes, they are characterized by a subtle smell of roses. Number four, the stigmata are accompanied by continual bleeding. And number five, the stigmata remain unchanged in spite of all medical treatment and are not affected by any therapeutic remedies. Now, if you have these five criteria, then your stigmata can be considered real. Padre Pio met all these five criteria. But who exactly is Padre Pio? Padre Pio was born on May 25th of the year 1887 in Pietrecina, a small town in southern Italy. His real name was Francesco Forgioni. His parents were devout Catholics, but little Francesco always had a deeper connection and relationship with God. As a child, he was an altar server, mostly because since he was five years old, he knew he wanted to become a priest. Little Francesco also worked on the farm by taking care of a small flock sheep that his family owned until he was 10 years old, which delayed his education greatly. At age 14, he saw a couple of Capuchin missionaries that came into his town and little Francesco was moved by this encounter and so he asked to join the Capuchins. He joined the Capuchin order in Morcone, Italy, where he received the name of Fratello Pio, Brother Pio. In the year 1910, on the morning of Friday, September the 17th, what do we celebrate on the 17th? The stigmata of St. Francis. Now this is why St. Francis and Padre Pio are so connected. Padre Pio is a spiritual son of St. Francis of Assisi by virtue of joining the Franciscan family. But both of them are united in a very special way because both of them were united in the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, September 17, Father Pio was praying alone in a small chapel after attending Mass 
when suddenly he has a vision of a crucifix and he feels himself being open in his hand, his feet, and his heart. He felt them being pierced and realized that he was bleeding heavily. Padre Pio bore the stigmata for 50 years. He received the stigmata in 1910, but eventually they disappeared. Why? Because he was drafted in the Italian military. However, he came back home because of his poor health. And in 1918, the stigmata reappeared on Friday, September the 20th, and this time, they remained with them until Friday, September the 20th of the year 1968. During this year of 1968, the stigmata disappeared mysteriously, in the same mysterious way they appeared. Padre Pio died on September the 20th, 23rd of the year 1968. Now, because Padre Pio was ordained to the priesthood, he had a public minister ministry that allowed him to have interaction with a lot of people, as Saint Giovanni Rotondo. All of this public ministry that he was doing allowed him to gain faith not only in his hometown, but also around the world. Padre Pio often allowed people his, his hands at the place where the stigmata lie, or lay, because according to him, the stigmata were not his own, but they were our Lord's wounds. Now, Padre Pio is well known for the stigmata, but there are also some other gifts that he is known for. For example, by location, reading consciences, prophecies, healings, and conversions. First, a word on by location. If you think that the stigmata is a rare and strange phenomenon, by location is even a stranger phenomenon. Reported by location or relocation also appears in the Bible. Let me give you an example. In chapter 8 of the Acts of the Apostles, you hear the story of Philip disappearing. This is when Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch, and then he says in verse 39, When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Wouldn't you like to have this gift that you would avoid all the traffic here in Chicago? That would be great. The reality is that only of us are or have experienced this gift, and that, of course, is contributed or attributed to St. Padre Pio. Padre Pio's first bilocation ever to be reported took place when he was only a seminarian studying to become a priest. Padre Pio himself reported that when he was in choir, which is where the captions come together to have prayer, he said that all of a sudden he found himself in a wealthy person's house. And in this house there was a woman giving birth to her daughter. And as she is giving birth, her husband is dying in another bedroom. As Padre Pio finds himself in the midst of all of this, our Blessed Mother appears to him and says, I am entrusting this newborn child to you, and I want you to, to take care of it. Padre Pio says, how would I find her? I don't even know where I am. But our Blessed Mother says, she will find you. 
But first, you will meet her in Rome. Seventeen years later, this is now the seventeen-year-old girl named Giovanna is in Rome, and she goes to St. Peter's Basilica because she is having doubts about her faith, and she wants to talk to a priest about these doubts. But she couldn't find any priest until she finds a Capuchin friar, a Capuchin monk, and she says to him, Father, can I speak to you? The Capuchin monk says, Surely, and invites her into one of the confessionals. She shares with them the doubts to the Capuchin monk, and the Capuchin friar gives her peace and makes her doubts disappear. She gets out of the confessional, and then she wants to meet this friar. And so she waits for hours outside the confessional, hoping to catch him once he comes out. The sacristan says to her, I'm sorry, but you have to leave. The, the basilica is now closing. She says, Sir, I, I would like to stay and wait for the mom in the confessional. I would like to meet him. He says, there is no one in there. There is nobody in the confessional. And so she is forced to leave. A year later, Giovanna is in is at uh, Saint Giovanni Rotondo, the hometown where Saint Saint Padre Pio finds himself. And when Padre Pio sees her, he says to her, "Giovanna, Giovanna, I know you. You were born on the day that your father died." You can imagine Giovanna. Giovanna is like, what? How? I don't even know you. And Padre Pio says to her, I met you last year in Rome, in the confessional. And then she remembers. He tells her being there when she was born, when her father died. And she begins weeping. She says to Padre Pio, Father, would you you take care of my spirituality? And Padre Pio replies to her, Of course, my daughter. You have been entrusted to me by our Blessed Mother. Come off to St. Giovanni Rotondo and I will take care of your soul in accordance with the wish of our Heavenly Mother. How many other events of my location have been reported of uh, Padre Pio? But he is also known for spending a lot of times in the confessional. Sometimes 15 to 16 hours in the confessional. Of course, there is also all of those stories about him helping other people to convert or to come back to the faith. But the point that I'm trying to make is that you have here a very, very holy man who dedicated all of his life to save the souls of all those who came to him through his intercession. Now, I have with me, I have to tell you this story. As I have with me a relic was in Padre Pio, and it's basically a small piece of cloth stained with the blood of Padre Pio. And about five years ago, I lived with the Capuchin friar from Peru, and he was telling me a story that happened uh, a long time ago in, in Peru, where the friary in Peru had a shirt stained with the blood of Padre Pio, and they kept it in the friary as a relic. And one day, one of the postulants comes in, and he finds his shirt stained with blood, and he says, why would anybody keep the shirt like that? And so he thinks, oh, I'll wash it. And so he does. He washes the shirt. And when the guardian comes back, he finds the shirt clean. And so he is like, what happened? Well, he's lucky he didn't get kicked out of the, of the order. 
Another story that I want to tell you, I want to share with you, is that the campuses normally do a two-year uh, initial formation, which is postulancy and novitiate. Postulancy is mostly focused on ministry, helping the people, especially the outcasts and the poor. The novitiate is what we call our spiritual year because most of the day of this year, we're, we spend it in, in the chapel, praying, contemplating, meditating, and really exposing ourselves to a spiritual life that has a long tradition in the Capuchin order. And there, therefore, this allows us to make a decision about our life in the order. Do we, want, do we really want to do this? Do we want to continue? But oftentimes, having so much time to prayer and spending a lot of time in meditation, adoration, contemplation can get a little bit tricky. But let me tell you why. When a person spends that much time praying and contemplating, sometimes the devil comes and says to you, you are very holy. You are spending a lot of time praying. You are dedicating a lot of time to the service of God. I know for a fact a lot of my classmates were praying to get the stigmata. And so this is where we have to be really careful because this can turn into a spiritual vanity. Wanting to have the stigmata or wanting to have the special gifts, not really out of charity, but really to show others that we are holy or that we are different or that we are closer to God. People like Patrick Pio have been chosen for some strange reason to bear these wounds and to have these gifts. However, these are not the gifts that made them holy. Holiness is something totally different. And it can be something as simple as smiling or serving others. I'm gonna say a couple, a couple of things in Spanish for all the Spanish-speaking uh, people here present, and then we can go into questions. Algunas de las cosas que quiero comentar sobre Padre Pío es que para entender a Padre Pío podemos empezar hablando de San Francisco de Asís, porque San Francisco de Asís y el Padre Pío tienen una conexión muy importante, no solamente porque los dos llevan el mismo nombre, sino porque el Padre Pío, pues es parte de la familia franciscana y recibe las estigmatas de nuestro Señor en la fiesta de las estigmatas de San Francisco. Sin embargo, los regalos que Dios nos da a través de de sus dones no son el regalo más importante el regalo más importante que Dios nos ha dado es su amor su Hijo nuestro Señor Jesucristo ese es el don más importante como San Pablo dice así podamos hablar la lengua de los ángeles así podamos mover montañas si no tenemos amor no somos nada. Esta es la importancia de entender que la santidad no se encuentra en las cosas extraordinarias que podamos tener o hacer, sino más bien en la capacidad de entregarnos a amar a los demás. Ahí se encuentra la santidad. Ahí se encuentra el misterio. Por alguna razón Dios escoge a ciertas personas 
durante toda la historia de la cristiandad y les ha dado dones especiales no para sobresalir sobre otros, sino para comprobar que Dios está con su gente. Incluso cuando les da las estigmatas a su gente. Una de las cosas que tenemos que cuidarnos mucho espiritualmente es pedir dones especiales simplemente por el hecho de querer sobresalir ante los demás. Se tiene que tener cuidado porque esta es una vanidad espiritual, algo que no es genuino ni sale del corazón. Si en verdad quieres unirte a Dios, búscale a través del amor y allí te convertirás en un nuevo ser, así como se convirtió San Francisco de Asís y así como se convirtió Padre Pío, que desde pequeño su intención era amar a Dios y servir a los demás. A los cinco años él estaba haciendo actos de penitencia por las almas que estaban perdidas. As a five-year-old, St. Padre Pio was already exercising acts of penance for the souls that needed it the most. Five years old. This allowed him to gain a spiritual maturity that he is known for, that he is loved for. Entonces, entender el misterio de Dios a través del amor. Vamos a dejar ahora eh, tiempo para eh, las preguntas. Sin embargo, me gustaría compartirles otra imagen que estaba preparando o que había escuchado. Y esta es una imagen de San Francisco de Asís acercándose a la cruz de Jesús, probablemente ya la han mirado ustedes, pero es San Francisco de Asís que se acerca a la imagen de nuestro Señor cuando está en la cruz, y San Francisco de Asís levanta las manos como queriendo ayudar a Jesús a bajar de la cruz, y Jesús extiende la mano como invitando a San Francisco a estar ahí. Esta reflexión nos la compartió un hermano, hace dos días, capuchino, en donde él explica que dos capuchinos estaban mirando esta imagen y de repente uno de ellos dice, ¿no es impresionante que San Francisco, movido, trata de ayudar a Jesús a bajar de la cruz? Y el otro capuchino dice, ¿o no será más bien que Jesús lo está invitando a que suba a la cruz? I'm going to share with you one last insight that we got from one of our brothers a couple of days ago where he was uh, telling us about two captions that were looking at the picture of St. Francis gazing on Jesus who is on the cross and St. Francis is embracing Jesus and he's got his hands extend, extend like this. And Jesus extends, extends one hand. And so one of the captions says, Isn't that amazing that St. Francis is gazing upon our Lord Jesus and he's trying to help him out, get him out of the cross. The other caption says, Or maybe it is Christ that is inviting St. Francis to join them on the cross. The point that I want to make is that all of us, in one way or another, we are all invited to climb to the cross by way of our baptism. Because we don't only share the redemptive grace through our baptism, but we also share the sufferings of Christ. Now you don't have to have the stigma top on your hands, on your head, on your feet, on your side. 
one way or another, we are all invited to share the sufferings of Christ, which is not for your own good, but for the good of others. Because we all belong to the same body, the mystical body of Christ. There is no saying in Spanish that we all carry a cross. What is your cross? And I tell you, do not be afraid of your cross, for it has been given to you for your good, for the good of others. And if you ever become afraid of it, ask the Lord to give you the strength and to give you the wisdom of how to carry your own cross, the cross of others. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so, very well, I don't think uh, many of you uh, took a nap, so that's a good thing. Except Brother John here at the front. But right now, uh, I would like to see if any of you have any questions. And if you do, please step forward. And there is a mic here at the center. Why Father Pio was suppressed in his priestly ministry? ¿Por qué Padre Pío fue suprimido de su ministerio sacerdotal? Ustedes han escuchado. So one of the questions was, why was Padre Pío removed from his ministry? Is that correct? From his ministry, suppressed. In other words, removed. One of the reasons why I and I truly believe this is because you might have heard this before, but the devil has snuck, or the devil has made his way into the church, and he doesn't like it when someone that gifted is saving a lot of souls. And the only reason why I say that is because Padre Pio always believed that the devil has something to do with it. And one of his confessors, Padre Amor, Gabriel Amor, who was the exorcist of Rome, shared this with, uh, with his public. However, he never took it against his superiors, but rather he obeyed because he said that it was better to obey than to go against God. But I think at the end, there is always justice. And even though he was removed from his ministry for a very long time, he, he was able to go back. Una de las cosas que yo decía era de que Padre Pío, de alguna u otra manera, él siempre creyó que el demonio estaba detrás de todo esto. Y él no lo tomó en contra de sus superiores porque él pensaba que era mejor obedecer que ir en contra de la iglesia. Pero él creía que de alguna u otra manera los poderes del demonio habían llevado a todo esto. Y él siguió confiando en Dios y al final él fue pudo regresar a su ministerio después de algún tiempo. But that's probably, that will be my answer to that question. Um, and I don't, I didn't make it up, you know, he, he told his confessor about it. Any other questions? If you will, please, uh, get the mic close to your, so that everyone can hear ¿Nos podría explicar un poco acerca del lema del Padre Pío de ahora confía y no te preocupes? Ya. El Padre Pío creía que nuestra relación con Dios era más simple de lo que muchas de las veces nosotros podemos entender. Por ejemplo, decía, 
a todos los problemas, a todas las cruces que tienen, no se preocupen. Hay tres cosas que hacer. Oren, tengan fe y dejen que Dios actúe en sus vidas. La razón de por qué Él dice esto es porque si una persona empieza a tener, eh, a complicarse la vida y de alguna manera deja que estos problemas aumenten, en realidad lo que estás haciendo es divinizando tu fe. Entonces, para que tu fe crezca, tienes que callar estas cosas y decir, se lo dejo a las manos de Dios. Ora, ten fe y no te preocupes. Lo demás Dios te lo va eh, a dar. The question was, why was uh, Padre Pio uh, suggesting to people not to worry, but to have faith and to pray and to let everything in the hands of God? And one of the reasons why he always did that is because he really believed that we sometimes complicate ourselves more than we need to. He says, if you have a problem, come to the cross and lay your problems at the cross. Then all you got left is to pray, to have faith, and to allow God to work in your life. Alguna otra pregunta? Is there another question? I have quite a few questions here. First of all, you have mentioned about 300, more than 300. Uh, 340? 40 stigmatas. Are those proven and have witnesses? And is it possible that it is a kind of a deception from the uh, evil forces? Because sometimes when we pray we're granted our prayer, you have really to discern if it is coming from God or is coming from the other side of the, you know. Right. There might be more than 340 cases. There might be anywhere from 340 to a thousand. However, the church has records of 340. And you have to remember that is not the fact that you have this stigma time. It's that you have to prove to be a virtuous person. That's why only eight out of those 340 are canonized. Only eight. The other ones might well just be blessed and be beatified or have or are in the process. But it's not the stigma time. What the church is looking at is the holiness of the person. Thank you. Second question. You mentioned five, five criteria to be the stigma that to be real. And it must appear instantly in this place and chains not affected by mental measures. So does it also heal spontaneously? If it does. Does it leave his car? It depends on the case. Padre Pio was a very special, unique case because the wounds, even though they were not bleeding 24 7, they were always present, and that's why he wore those uh, gloves, fin uh, fingerless gloves, uh, because he was ashamed. He, in, in his in his mind, he was not worthy of bearing the wounds of Christ. He thought that was something so holy and so special because they were not theirs, they were God's. And so he didn't think he was worthy of walking around with the wounds of Christ. And so he was ashamed of it and he covered them. In many other cases, the wounds come and they, 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 they disappear in the same way they come. There, there, there is no specific uh, 
cases that are similar, they're all very, very different, and so it depends on the person, but I know from the readings or from the writings of Padre Pio, they were there, but they will bleed uh, heavily on Fridays and days of, of Holy Week. So it just kind of depends on the person and the case. Okay, thank you, brother. And the last question, I've heard, or oh, I have read that Padre Pio will know when you look at the question that you have to try hearts. Don't try hard when you go and he refuses. He, he doesn't feel that you just go for the heck. Oh, I'm a Catholic, you have to go to confession. This is one of the requirements. He can read your mind and your heart. Is it true? He, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like Padre Pio or don't emphasize with Padre Pio because he came across as too tough, too harsh on people. But the reason why he was like that is because he was not only able to read the mind but also the heart. And when he saw that a person came to confession, if he had his heart or her heart was not uh, move, uh, was not looking for a change, he will refuse uh, the absolution. But he wouldn't say you don't deserve absolution. He will suggest them to come back, to go and repent, and then come back. Um, but yes, he was able to read not only the mind, but also the heart. And there are those cases where he denied absolution because he thought that the person was not ready to receive it because the heart was not ready uh, looking for reconciliation. Uh, we can get a little theological in this discussion, but that's a simple answer. Thank you, brothers. Las heridas que él tenía en sus manos, en sus pies y en su costado eh, a veces sanaban y a veces sangraban un poco más. A él le daba vergüenza mostrarlas en público porque él se sentía que no era suficiente, eh, que no era, ¿cómo se dice? Worthy. Uh, digno, muchas gracias, que no se sentía digno de tener las heridas de nuestro Señor Jesucristo presentes en su cuerpo. Él se cuidaba mucho en cuestión de mostrarlas en público, más sin embargo dejaba que se las besara eh, a través del guante, porque él decía de que las, las eh, heridas no eran sus heridas, sino eran las heridas de Cristo. Entonces de alguna manera estaban venerando las heridas de Cristo. Es una muy buena pregunta, ¿por qué no creerle al Padre Pío que tenía las heridas? Porque hay cinco criterios. Sí, esa era la pregunta. No, la pregunta era que lo que yo poco no entendí, que él sabía lo del corazón y lo de la mente. Entonces, eso me gustaría en español para los que estamos en español. Muy bien. Eh, la pregunta era que les explicara eh, lo de la absolución eh, porque muchas de las veces a Padre Prío se le critica porque era 
muy duro dentro de la confesión y la respuesta más simple y esto lo explica él en sus escritos de que muchas veces él negaba la absolución porque él podía leer la mente y el corazón de las personas entonces cuando él notaba que la persona no estaba preparada para buscar la absolución que su corazón en realidad no buscaba la gracia de Dios que era simplemente el simple hecho de ir a quitarse ese remordimiento pero su corazón seguía buscando el pecado él decía primero prepara tu vida, arregla tu vida y después vienes otra vez para la absolución cuando en verdad busques la gracia de Dios porque ahorita en realidad no quieres cambiar tu vida es como si yo voy uh, con mi hermano Audrey y le digo de repente te quiero, vamos a darnos un abrazo pero en realidad lo digo solamente en palabras hacia afuera cuando por dentro le tengo mucho odio el padre Pío podía notar el odio de dentro y decía no te puedo dar la solución porque aún tienes el odio por dentro por fuera dices sí, te quiero, pero por dentro tu corazón sigue eh, no preparado y entonces decía prepara arrepiéntete en realidad busca ya no ofender a Dios a través de este pecado y entonces regresa para darte la absolución entonces por eso no sé si es. Are there any other questions? Oh, very good talk, thank you. Uh, secondly, I'm a little confused. Are stigmata a cause of holiness, an effect of holiness, or it's kind of both? And the, the skeptics have an accusation that it was psychosomatic. Are there any, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but are there any cases of people who had this that it was psychosomatic? And Thank you. So what I was saying is that the church does not see holiness as a result of the stigmata, but expects to see holiness in the person regardless of the stigmata. Not necessarily, and if it does, the church expects to see this case until the person dies because remember what I was saying regardless of the union the person might have with God we are always in risk to fall in sin so even though you might have you might bear the stigmata you may very well fall into sin because we'll have someone who is going to be targeting you even harder than any of us who don't have the stigmata. So the church is very careful in saying, yes, this person is holy. Look at him or look at her. He has the stigmata. The church will analyze the case until the person has died because it is then that we can investigate the case and the person, the way the, the person lived his or her life in light of the virtues, not in light of the stigmata, because the stigmata is just a gift, like the gift anyone else here has of, by virtue of having a right hand. The other one is, there was an American doctor who came to Italy and looked at him and didn't believe uh, that the, they were real. And the study, he was a psychologist, and the study he did affirmed that there were no medical explanations as to say this is a medical thing or this is a psychological thing. It was never proved to be created by himself. So we can argue whether they were real or not. But the, the, the reality is that not even science was able to prove that he, they were fake. Brother Mayor, did have the last question? Give me a softball. What is the uh, ministry of the Catholic? It really varies. The 
U.S. campuses, which is the province that we belong to, is very committed to social work, working with the poor. Uh, we don't have many ministries here in Chicago, but we have a lot of ministries in Detroit and in Milwaukee. Um, and that really takes a lot of the resources and the personnel that we have. However, that is not limited to, we're not limited to just that. We also have a high school seminary. We have parishes. We have preachers who go around preaching the gospel. Uh, it's really a variety of different ministries, but if there is an emphasis, I would say, in, in social work and in helping the poor and the outcasts, especially in Detroit and in Milwaukee. And I, I think we're just about done. Maybe, yeah. We'll just have one last question. And, uh, we're going to be out here if you want to talk to one of the brothers, right? Um, St. Hilary works with Transfiguration Parish up in uh, St. Patrick Hill, Delta Unified. How can St. Patrick Hill work? What? Delta Unified. I think by way of intercession. I think by way of prayer, I think by way of looking at his, at his life as a model of humility and living our own personal desires or biases behind, but looking for the good of the community. I think that can only be reached in the Spirit of God. And that can be done through prayer, especially uh, through the intercession of the saints. And you have a great saint here, very holy man. I was praying to him last night, and I was saying, what do you even want me to say to, to your people? I got no answer, so I just pretty much say whatever I want. So. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. Uh, since, since you got the Renika from, from the first class of the Father Pio, can you give us a blessing? I think Father will give you the blessing with the relic. However, uh, Brother John, Brother Jacob, Brother Roach, and Brother Roach, we're going to be in the back. We have relics with us, and we'll give you the relics. Not of Padre Pio, but another of our saints, uh, Father Solanus Casey, Thank you. from the United States. I have him with me, and Audrey has other things that we'll give to you gladly. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Uh, keep great to Padre Pio, and keep us in your prayers as we continue our formation and pray to God and our Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thank you all.
follow me. Con el Padre Pío, adoremos a Jesús, nuestro Redentor. Let us all kneel.
Oremos un Padre nuestro y tres aves marías para alcanzar la fe, la esperanza y la caridad. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres madre entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Primer misterio doloroso, contemplamos. Gloria al Padre, gloria al Hijo y gloria al Espíritu Santo. la oración de Jesús en el huerto de los olivos. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres, Madre, entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Gloria al Padre, gloria al Hijo y gloria al Espíritu Santo. Gloria a Dios, sí, que va a por los siglos de los siglos. María, Madre de Gracia, Madre de Misericordia. Amparo al Gran Señor, oh Jesús mío, perdona nuestros pecados, líbranos del fuego del infierno, lleva al cielo. 
reservo a todas las almas, especialmente a las más necesitadas de tu divina luz. Amén. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from our sins, lead us all to heaven, especially those in the name of our sins. Tercer misterio doloroso, contemplamos la coronación de espinas de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Amén. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Amén. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. 
Hijo, bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, María, Dios te salve, María, que eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Gloria al Padre, gloria al Hijo y gloria al Espíritu Santo. Como en un principio, ahora siempre de los siglos. Oh Jesús mío, perdona nuestros pecados, líbranos del fuego del infierno. Lleva al cielo a todas las almas, especialmente las más necesitadas de la divina misericordia. Amén. The fourth circle mystery, the carrying of the cross. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Santificado sea tu nombre, 
Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Dios te salve, María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María, Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres madre entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo, bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Gloria al Padre, gloria al Hijo y gloria al Espíritu Santo. de la iglesia 
Madre de la Misericordia, Madre de la Divina Gracia, Madre de la Esperanza, Madre Purísima, Madre Castísima, Madre Siempre Virgen, Madre Inmaculada, Madre Amable, Madre Admirable, Madre del Buen Consejo, Madre del Creador, Madre del Salvador, Virgen Prudentísima, Virgen Digna de Veneración, Virgen Digna de Alabanza, Virgen Poderosa, Virgen Clemente, Virgen Fiel, Espejo de Justicia, Trono de la Sabiduría, Causa de nuestra Alegría, Vaso Espiritual, Vaso Digno de Honor, Vaso Insigne de Devoción, Rosa Mística, Torre de David, Torre de Marfil, Casa de Oro, Arca de la Alianza, Puerta del Cielo, Estrella de la Mañana, Salud de los Enfermos, Refugio de los Pecadores, Consuelo de los Migrantes, Consoladora de los Afligidos, Auxilio de los Cristianos, Reina de los Ángeles, Reina de los Patriarcas, Reina de los Profetas, Reina de los Apóstoles, Reina de los Mártires, Reina de los Confesores, Reina de las Vírgenes, Reina de todos los Santos, Reina concebida sin pecado original, Reina Asunta al Cielo, Reina del Santísimo Rosario, Reina de las Familias, Reina de la Paz, Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, perdónanos Señor. Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, escúchame Señor. Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad y misericordia de nosotros. Ruega por nosotros, Santa Madre de Dios, para que seamos dignos de las promesas de Cristo. Oración, te rogamos, nos conceda Señor Dios nuestro, gozar de continua salud de alma y cuerpo, y por la gloriosa intercesión de la bienaventurada siempre Virgen María, vernos libres de las tristezas de la vida presente y disfrutar de las alegrías eternas por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén.
Padre Pío de Petresina, Padre Santo, que ahora vives con Dios, nuestro Padre amoroso y con Jesucristo el Señor. Creciste en santidad y resististe las seducciones del enemigo. Tú fuiste físicamente golpeado por los espíritus infernales del mal que, prendían, que pretendían forzarte a abandonar el camino a la santidad que habías elegido seguir. Ora por nosotros al Padre para que por tu intercesión y en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo tengamos el valor espiritual para renunciar al pecado y ser fortalecidos en la fe hasta la hora de la muerte. Mencionamos nuestras intenciones en nuestra mente. Palabras del Padre Pío. Ten valor, no temas a la furia de tu ser. Tentaciones, desalientos y agitaciones es lo que el enemigo ofrece. Recuerda esto. Si el enemigo ha servido, es un signo de que está afuera, no adentro. Lo que nos debe aterrar es su paz y concordia con el alma humana. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase, Señor, tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, el Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Gloria al Padre y al Hijo y al Espíritu Santo, como en el principio, ahora y siempre, con los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Letanías de San Padre Pío. Señor, ten piedad de nosotros. Cristo, óyenos. Dios Padre Celestial, ten piedad de nosotros. Dios Hijo Redentor del Mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Dios Espíritu Santo, de piedad de nosotros. Santísima Trinidad, que eres un solo Dios, de piedad de nosotros. Santa María, Madre de Dios, de por nosotros. Santa María, Virgen Inmaculada, de por nosotros. San Pío de Pietrechina, de por nosotros. Amado por Dios, de por nosotros. Imitador de Jesucristo, de por nosotros. Buen pastor de la gente, modelo para sacerdotes, luz de la iglesia, adorador del Santísimo Sacramento, fiel hijo de San Francisco, marcado con la estigma sagrada de Jesucristo, paciente en el sufrimiento, auxilio de los moribundos. Director de las almas, corazón de oro, apóstol de misericordia, obrador de milagros, consuelo de los afligidos, amante del Santísimo Rosario, ayuda de las almas en duda y oscuridad. Consuelo de los enfermos, ejemplo de la humildad, fuente de sabiduría, espejo de la vida divina. Spirit, meeting us to Christ. 